Welcome back to the Blockchain Gate. Today, we're going to be talking about hashing and digital signatures in blockchain. Hashing plays a big role in both the tamper-proof and the trust mechanisms within the blockchain ecosystem. Hashing is when you take a specific amount of input data, apply an algorithm or mechanism to it, and generate a fixed size of output data. The input, which is represented in bits, could be a spreadsheet, an audio file, or anything on the internet. It could be any size and infinitely big. Then the hashing algorithm takes any number of bits and transforms it into a standard amount of bits. Hashes are generally used to give a unique identity to a file. This is called a check sum. The hash is used to verify that a file has not been changed or tampered with by anyone besides the author of that specific file. A practical application of this is a whistleblower would publish files along with their hashes. Anyone who downloads the files can verify they are from the whistleblower by calculating the hash from the file. If there is any discrepancy, then you know it is not the exact file that the whistleblower released and that it was tampered with. So how does this affect the blockchain? Hashes are used in blockchain to represent the current state of the network. Inputs are all the transactions that have happened on the blockchain. The output hash is the current state of the blockchain or current state of the transaction. The hash is used to agree between all peers that the blockchain state is the same, basically to come to consensus. Here are how hashes are calculated within the blockchain. The first hash is calculated for the first block, the genesis, using transactions from the first block of transactions on the network. Initial transactions generate a block hash for the genesis block. For each subsequent block generated, the previous block's hash, as well as its own transactions as inputs, generate a new block hash. The blockchain is formed by each new block identifying the previous block before it. This system means if a previous transaction is changed, so does the hash of the block to which it belongs, as well as the following blocks. You can see tampering by comparing the hashes of all previous blocks and current blocks. The current state of the blockchain is decided by a 264-bit hash that the entire network has to agree on. Digital signatures are ways to prove that a message or agreement came from a specific party, not a hacker. They are like real signatures, except more secure. They use cryptography instead of personalized writing. We can see digital signatures on many digital systems, such as websites with their HTTPS. Along with hashing in digital signatures, there's also a function called asymmetric encryption systems. Asymmetric encryption systems have users create a public key and private key using an algorithm. The public and private keys are related to each other through a mathematical relationship. The public key is distributed publicly as an address to receive messages or transactions. The private key is used to digitally sign messages sent or received. The private key is meant to be kept secret. It ensures that money sent from an account can only be done by whoever knows the private key. The key is sent with messages so that both parties know only the opposite party could have sent the message. Private and public keys allow us to use the blockchain without registering an account. That concludes our video on hashing and digital signatures. Make sure to subscribe to the blockchain gate for more information.